as a studio engineer and somebody who's been chasing after quote unquote ultimate metal tone for quite a while now, I've come to realize that the more and more bullshit that we're fed about guitar tone like vacuum tubes and toad wood and stuff like that really don't matter. And it really comes down to the mic, the speaker and the pickups you're using. Those are the single most important factors of your overall tone voicing, especially when it comes to the speakers. You know, the things that actually turn your electrical signal into something acoustic. That's what we're hearing. Those are going to have the most massive effect on what's going on. And, you know, I'm going to be doing something in the very near future where we try the same cabinet made out of different materials and hear if there's actual tone wood when it comes to cabinet construction. I'm very curious about that one. But before I get into that, I wanted to take a look and see what we could do if we found the world's shittiest guitar cabinet and upgraded that. And and this video was inspired by the viewer, JT Osborne. Humor me here. Coley did that video where he compared the OS RectoCab versus the Marshall Mark IV OS Cab. The through line being the size of the cabinet and construction, obviously having a huge influence on the low end. That got me thinking about what other larger 4x12s are out there. Then I remembered my very first POS, a Dirt Cheap 412, that you actually featured on this channel before, the Behringer B412S. Obviously, it sounded like a hot pile of assholes when you compared it to the angle, but I'm pretty sure those Jensen speakers were a big reason why it sounded like bassist spunk. I've been hunting around for one to try with decent speakers, but it'd be really cool to hear someone that's significantly better at pulling guitar tone than I am. Food for thought, anyway. Dude, I really appreciate the compliment, but don't sell yourself short. You just gotta put a little bit more time into miking up cabinets and it will come to you as well. You just gotta persevere. And I wish you the best of luck with that. Now, this comment got me thinking, okay, this might be really cool to take a really dirt cheap, shitty guitar cabinet and see if we can upgrade it into something amazing. And I think we found it in the form of a Behringer BG412H which we picked up for a hundred Canadian dollars used and that translates into about $78 American. This thing comes loaded with a Jensen JCH 1270s, which you can pick up for $39 US each on eBay these days. And even then that's probably asking way too much for what they are. Now, I'm sure this will come as absolutely no surprise to anyone, but with those speakers, the cabinet really doesn't sound that great. Let me show you exactly what I mean. kind of surprised me the lead tone coming out of those speakers isn't half bad but that rhythm tone was not quite fried assholes like an, an old line six would sound like it's more kind of like barbecued turds it's still pretty terrible so the question remains can we take an old crappy cabinet and drop in something awesome and how big of a tone shift are we going to get is this going to be something really great or is it still just going to sound kind of eh it's a question i've never really heard answered in any kind of significant way so i figured fuck it let me do it so let me go grab that cabinet cabinet and uh, swap some speakers out and let's see what we can do with it. Now, my biggest concern here with the cabinet is the steel grill itself. Like, listen to this rattle. That is a cause for concern. I mean, like all the screws are in place, but we're getting that rattle. So when I go to remic this thing up with the new speakers, I don't know if I'm going to put that steel grill back in place because I don't think it's going to help the sound. Not at all. So I got the grill off and I'm just taking a look at this. Wow, what in the hell is this? Yikes. That is the filthiest fucking thing I think I've ever seen since my teenage years. I've seen cabinets in worse shape, but this one is pretty freaking nasty. I mean, like, wow, look at all that. Yikes. Is that mold? I don't fucking know. I don't want to know. I think I'm going to need a fucking tetanus shot after I take these speakers out. Yikes. I've got the speakers out of the cabinet and just looking things over, it's definitely an MDF cabinet, but the soundboard is actually plywood, so that might be pretty cool. And true to form, it's missing one of the T-nuts right here, so there's nothing actually for the speaker to screw into here. So hopefully that's not gonna be too much of an issue. Gotta say, this is hilarious though. If you look, this is, looks like a slant cabinet, but it's not, it's actually a straight cabinet. Instead of you know building a two-piece baffle uh, at an angle, along these lines here they made it look like that and bent the metal for the grill but the actual soundboard 
is straight. Now, there's been some discussion with Nolly and Cola about slant calves versus straight calves, where straight calves can actually cause some issues, uh, whereas a slant cab is slanted, therefore, you're not going to get those certain frequency buildups because you're not going to get standing waves inside the cabinet. This is definitely going to cause us some standing waves, so very curious to hear how this is going to sound once we get some decent speakers installed. The speakers we chose for this build were a pair of vintage Celestian T75s from around 1994 because those were the quintessential thrash tone speakers. They become rather popular over on the SMG Discord as of late, as many players there are trying to escape the vintage 30 clone tone that is so rampant among metal players these days. Celestian also sent me several sets of other speakers to try out for my upcoming cabinet tone wood experiment, so I thought I'd drop in the Neo Creambacks, mainly because they're light and this cabinet is already heavy enough as it's made from MDF. Not only was this cabinet disgustingly filthy, to add to the overall classiness vibe, the custom Tolex job was being held on by duct tape. Humans are visual creatures and we tend to listen with our eyes. My hopes for something usable out of this cabinet were very low. And after a few initial tests, I got the shock of my life. I wasn't really intending to mic up the Neo Creambacks, but I'm so glad I did, because what came roaring out of the speakers blew me away. Suddenly, we've got a wonderful grinding snarl that kind of reminds me of that old school In Flames Ailstorm type tone that you'd get out of the early 2000s Engel cabs. Those were loaded with vintage 30s, of course, but they sound miles apart from the modern vintage 30. This was an inconvenient fact that I discovered when trying out Lassa Lambert's cab that he used on the first Ailstorm record when I visited him last summer. Now, this isn't a 100% match, and I wouldn't want it to be. But suddenly, there's a huge difference in the top end attack, and this sounds much closer to what I've been trying to achieve for the last several years. Signal chain here is a Revmark III, an SM57, and a Toll G12 with the bright switch engaged, many thanks to Jay Rustin for that tip, and the Toll is backed off about three feet and phase corrected with Sound Radix's auto align. I'll play the new mix and the old mix with the only variable being the speaker. Suddenly, those guitars go from sounding like barbecued turds to damn! That is starting to sound like my ideal metal rhythm tone. Now, as a client once pointed out to me years ago, the In Flames guitars sound kind of thin. And looking at the Neo Cream's frequency response, we get a pretty serious scoop at 1.5 kilohertz and a large bump at 2.5 kilohertz. And that's where all the attack is coming from. So after coming up with this mix, I sent it over to Charles Tagoni, the guitar player who performed on the track. His suggestion was to run two of the four rhythm tracks through a grindstein, and I'm like, hey, that's a great idea. I've got a hardware one, so I'll set up two of the rhythm tracks on the Rev Clean channel with a grindstein engage. And we got some very impressive results. After listening to the mix for a few days, of course, I wanted to start fucking with it. Now, for all you guys out there who have Final Mix, Final Mix 2, Final Mix 7, new Final Mix, you guys know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. The new speakers put the guitars into a whole different part of the frequency spectrum, and suddenly I'm hearing other instruments in the mix that much more cleanly. So I wound up rebuilding the entire drum mix to fit around the new spectrum that the guitars are now occupying. 
So I'm going to play the new mix and swap it out with the old mix featuring the Jensen's as well as the old mix with the Neo Creambacks. Not only do we have a lot more space in the new mix, the drums cut much more and have way more impact. This wound up being quite the little adventure. I took a hundred dollar cab that was downright disgusting and was probably destined for a landfill, swapped the speakers out and created what could possibly be the best mix I've ever got in my entire career. The guitars snarl and grind and the drums are simply pounding. And no, there's no sample augmentation going on. It's all Jackson Ward. The newfound clarity and attack on the guitars revealed the flaws in the original mix. And because of that, I got a better end result. Cost for this build, $78 for the cabinet, $290 for the T75s, and $350 for the Neo Creambacks. That comes to a grand total of $718 US dollars. By way of comparison, a brand new Mazar oversized recto cabinet, the same one that every single metal player on earth plays because they're so fucking unique, will set you back $12.99, and a Marshall 1960 vintage cab will cost you a whopping $1,749. You guys have often said in the comments that new gear can be inspiring, and I've always taken that statement with a bit of grain of salt, as it's a nice way to justify a new purchase. However, in this case, it really did inspire me to put the time in to make a better mix. I wound up doing 12 revisions to get it where I felt satisfied. And sometimes that is exactly what a mix needs. We don't always nail it the first time we render it. Sometimes we need to spend a few days on it to refine and polish. And in this case, I wound up with a whole new approach that I would be absolutely thrilled to put on a client's record. And if you're in the market for a 4x12, check out your local classifieds. You might be able to find a shitty old cabinet that you can upgrade for a much more affordable price than buying new. Just be sure to get your tetanus shot first. This was an inconvenient fact that I discovered. Oh, fuck! 